Hi, folks. I'm Frank the Pest Geek. I'm the owner of Nature Pest. I'm a certified operator in the state of Florida, and I've operated a pest control business for the last 15 years. And I get easily one to two calls a day where I have to talk to a client about why they're not getting the mosquito control, the mosquito control that they were expecting. And after consulting the client, going through the process that we go through to determine whether we're able to meet the customer's expectation and are they a fit for mosquito control, 80% um, of the time, what we discover is that no, uh, they're not. And what I wanted to discuss in this webinar, I'm going to be doing an entire, it's probably going to be about an hour long webinar on the reality of mosquito control based on the science. What can we realistically achieve for the client? What can the client realistically expect? And how does the client get the best result possible? So this isn't about necessarily about chemical. This is about understanding mosquito behavior, understanding our climate, understanding our environment, and then creating a holistic approach, which isn't usually mosquito control by the time the client calls a company is because they were on their website, they saw the advertisement and they said, you know, enjoy your backyard again, no bites guaranteed and things like that. And the customer is already, the marketing message is in line with what the customer's expectation is and therefore, when the company fails to deliver on that brand promise, the customer is disappointed. And when I talk to them, I say, look, the reality is that they're a fine company. You're not going to get anything better with us. It's not going to get you a better result unless you're able to do X, Y, and Z. And what we're going to do is look at everything. We're going to look at the chemistry. We're going to look at the biology. We're going to look at the 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 challenges that we have and why do we have these challenges to educate people on how they can reduce the mosquito population, not only for their home, but also maybe in their entire community, in their entire HOA. I get calls from HOAs. I get calls from restaurants. I get calls from all different places that are desperate, especially after the rain that we got um, over the last you know couple of weeks where you know Broward was two feet underwater. Um, the government had to step in and start mosquito spraying with airplanes again because the population of mosquito got under, out of control because of that situation. So what I want to look at is uh, you know the chemistry. I want to show you uh, what everybody's using. Um, there is no such thing as a secret product that we have that nobody else can get pretty much all the mosquito franchises use the same product. I'm going to go over here and move up to this so that you can see. I mean, this is the quintessential standard um, in the pest control industry uh, for mosquito franchises, uh, the staple product. This is called Archer IGR, and we're going to be talking about Archer IGR and also um, about the Man CS. Um, these are the two standards. Um, the reason they're the standard is has to do with number one, uh, some research behind it. Number two is the the promises the, the manufacturers are making. Um, but I'm going to show you that in spite of this product being a world-class product, which it is, we use it. We use all this chemistry, by the way. There's nothing here that I'm going to show you today that we're not using. If the expectation is that you're going to mist my house once a month with this best product, this is a brand name product by Sygenta. This is the original product. If you're going to spray with this and I'm not going to have any mosquito bites, you're going to be sadly disappointed. And we're going to go over it. So what this is, is this is a micro encapsulated pyrethroid, meaning it's the chemical compound has been covered with another chemical compound that allows this product to last longer and it's called micro encapsulation it's like literally putting it in a capsule 
uh, in a chemical capsule and then it releases over time. This product, which is our, our IGR, which is an insect growth regulator, doesn't kill the adult mosquito. So I'm giving you a full course on everything you're going to need to get the best mosquito control that you possibly can. Whether you buy it from me, whether you buy it from another uh, franchise, whether you buy it from a national brand, whether you decide to go do my own and buy it yourself and try it, um, you're going to need to know some facts. Now, full disclosure, I am also a um, affiliate marketer for Do My Own. I do buy products from them. I buy products from them on, on regularly because sometimes my supplier locally doesn't have it. Um, I have a minimum order with a larger supplier and I just need one bottle of something and I get this usually within three days. I get about the same price I get from my supplier. So you're going to buy it close to wholesale price of what everybody is buying it for. The, the secret to control is not something that's, I just, we just need something stronger. There's no such thing as stronger. It's called mode of action. It's how it works to kill the mosquito. But there are rules that you have to follow. There's federal rules and, and federal guidelines and the label um, and the, the what the label says you have to do in order to get that control. So this is an insect growth regulator. The active ingredient in this, which we're going to be discussing, is right here. It's pyroproxifen. Pyroproxifen kills the larvae. It works in water surfaces. One of the nice things about pyroproxifen is that pyroproxifen transfers. So if you spray it on a leaf uh, together with the demand CS and the insect lands on the leaf, it will contact the insecticide. It doesn't kill them instantly. Um, this is where, where most people think mosquito populations die instantly. If you spray a yard right now, there's what's known as a knockdown. That knockdown is going to happen when it hits the mosquito on contact, the mist, and, and brings the population down within an hour to a couple of hours, to 24 hours sometimes to bring that population down immediately. Problem is that population doesn't stay down for long because mosquitoes are flying into the area constantly. So they come in contact with this, then they go and go to a body of water and they go lay their eggs and they're, they got all that chemical on their legs. It transfers to the water and it starts to kill the larvae. Now, we're not talking about a pool of water uh, or a lake. We're talking about small little areas of water that mosquitoes like to go to, a hole in the tree, a little uh, toy that the kid left outside and it has water and they want to go in there and deposit their eggs, things like that. Where there is water accumulated, like plants like bromeliads, um, the mosquito, the chemical, when the mosquito lays the egg and it hatches, it's going to die. Therefore, it prevents a mosquito population from escalating very quickly. So all these products do is they bring the population down. Then if you use a product like an IGR, it reduces the breeding in that area. And we're going to be discussing mosquito population and mosquito uh, control. Um, the, the, why this is so important to use an IGR every time when you're doing mosquito treatment or at least treating the, the areas of water, let's say a, a potted plant, we're going to discuss all this, um, is because you can't just kill the adults, you got to kill the larvae. So the biggest mistake somebody makes is they buy an insecticide and they kill all the mosquitoes in the air, but the larvae is still breeding. So without killing the larvae, you're really not getting the best control you can. All right, so we're going to look at what this manufacturer says. Now, Cygenta says they got a 60-day assurance program. Combination of demand CS and Archer and Psych Growth Rater can help. Here's what it says. Read the marketing carefully. It says insect growth rate can help reduce mosquito populations and free up technicians time by moving to 60 day treatment cycles. Make one application of a recommended application rate one time and about every 60 day per account, it is recommended use of two gallons of finished spray per quarter acre. All right, and then that's approximately 10,000 square feet. Okay. A 30-day assurance program, a lower use of demand CS, 30-day mosquito treatment, even on demand rate. So this is what most people are going to do, especially if you're in South Florida. They're going to reduce the dosage. 
me get this out of here, reduce the dosage, and they're going to get about 30 days. Now, what does our experience tell us? We've done it both ways. We not, did not see a 60-day control of mosquito in South Florida ever. We tried it. We tried it again. We tried it again. The, the, their assurance program is a reduction to reduce populations. It is never, notice here, it doesn't say anything about total control. It doesn't say anything about eradication. It says a reduction. The question that the customer is going to have to interpret now is what does a reduction mean to me? If there's a thousand mosquitoes and we reduce it by 95% and we still have 50 mosquitoes biting, is the customer going to be satisfied with 50 mosquito bites? The chances are is no. And this is where the marketing message is not in line with the science and with the actual experience. Like I said, we use these products, we recommend these products. So here is another product that's a little bit different. It's the same active ingredient as if we go over here to Archer, which is pyroproxophen, and this is Lambda Silahothrin, okay? That's a mouthful. 9.7%. Okay, so now we go to Proflex, Lambda, Salaharthan, 3.88%. This one is, how? what percentage? 9.7. Okay, so this is a, a higher rate product that is mixed, that this comes separately, and it comes at a 1.3%. Now you have a product like Proflex. It's easier to use for the technician in the field because the technician in the field now doesn't have to mix two products. It's a convenience product. But it does have pyroproxophen at 1.3 and then has Navarolon at 1.3. These are both insect growth regulators. Okay, now insect growth regulators work two ways. Number one, it's, it's a juvenile hormone mimic, which is the pyroproxophen, with a chitin synthesis inhibitor, which is the Navarolon, and the insecticide that actually kills the adult mosquito is the lambda silohothrin. Silothrin. Silohothrin. There you go. See if you can say that three times fast. Okay. What does that mean? A chitin synthesis inhibitor is what it does is it prevents the mosquito during the metamorphosis process to create an exoskeleton, which is what that that is made of. the The chitin is what what insects use to make that crunchy exoskeleton. It prevents them from being able to create it. The pyroproxophen works as a juvenile hormone mimic. What it literally does is it prevents a juvenile from molting to the next stage. So if it, let's say one product wears down, there's still another product there that helps in the reduction because it doesn't prevent it from becoming a full adult. Or if it does become an adult, it can't fly, the wings are damaged, the uh, proboscis where it sucks blood is damaged, the mosquito is still there, but it, it really can't cause damage. Okay. So it's, it's also a micro-encapsulated, um, they use what is called CapVantage technology, where, um, uh, you know, Pyro, um, uh, Cygenta uses another name for their micro-encapsulation. It's basically the same process. You're encapsulating the chemical. All right. Now, what they show, and, and this is where the marketing and even pest control professionals buy into this and then they're disappointed is it that this graph shows the effect of proflex after aging 90 days against Aedes aegypti mosquito in this study proflex was applied on a plant and aged outdoor conditions for 90 days the mosquitoes were exposed to the treated leaves within one hour after exposure of treated leaves the mosquito died here is the only problem i have i can't validate the study nor find it anywhere so I got a problem. Second of all, it doesn't tell me outdoor condition. Was that outdoor condition in a 
subtropical environment like Florida? Or was it in California where you get 20 inches of rain a year and cooler temperatures? Was it in Nevada at 104 degrees where there is no rain? Study doesn't tell me that. Therefore, we have nothing to validate how we're going to judge this. I'm just saying the product we use ProFlex. This is a product we use. It's easier to use by our technicians. However, we're transparent with the client and we don't tell them they're going to get 30 days. I say you keep your expectations really low and then you're not disappointed. So what I do is we look at ProFlex again. It's Lambda Cyhothrin 3.8% Nervaroan. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one for later because I'm going to talk about this later. I don't want to get into that right now. It is a product that we use, but, um, and we're going to recommend it, but I want to talk to you about this first because this is where 90% of my clients that call me on the phone says, I need you to come and mist my yard for mosquitoes. I need you to spray my yard for mosquitoes. It's mosquito spraying and mosquito misting that is the staple in the industry. However, that is not the only product and it should never be used alone. If you're expecting to get control with mosquito misting alone, again, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Here is an article um, by a highly respected PhD professor from the university. He ran the University of Florida's um, entomology department. It's probably one of the world-renowned entomologists, highly respected. There is absolutely nothing here in this article that is inaccurate nor misleading. Let me blow this up for you. At the University of Florida, mosquito control is an important issue. Dr. Phil Kohler, endowed professor of entomology at IPMM Hall of Famer. This guy is like, you know, I've met him. I've talked to him. I've met him at a couple of conferences. He's a great guy, great teacher, great educator. Um, but he did a, a test. This was back in, this is PMP, Professional Pest Management Magazine, of 20, May of 2018 by Heather Goosh who is the writer at, at PMP. Um, here's where, well, did I lose you? Did I lose my my little thingy? Oh, keep tab on while recording. Here we go. Where, where did it go here? Oh, here we go. I lost, I lost my place. All right, I'm gonna move this to the side so you can read. Um, another benefit, uh, here we go. The IGR, and let's move this down so you can read it with me. Uh, remote eggs and Florida leaves, or the IGR, okay, tells you what I already discussed about IGR. And in, in the study, misspray treatment occurred every eight weeks with virtually, okay, so here, another benefit, not all mosquitoes are coming, containers uh, point out, some are traveling in, okay. So 100% control of Asian tiger mosquitoes. 80s albopictus. However, a PMP team worked with reported great results even after 12 weeks. Um, okay, now the question you got to ask yourself is how do you come to virtually 100% control of Asian tiger mosquitoes? The, 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 the only way you do this in a proper study is to take mosquito traps. And what you do is you take mosquito traps, you put them in the area that you have treated, and then you count how many you caught. So if there was a thousand mosquitoes, he says virtually 100%. It wasn't 100%, virtually. So virtually 100%, if you had a thousand mosquitoes, and then you say you got 99.9, .9, there's possibly, or 99, there's probably 100 to 10 mosquitoes still flying around. They weren't caught in the traps. That doesn't say anything about customer experience or whether customers still got bit when they went out in the prime mosquito feeding time, which is 6.30 to 9.30 at night and 6.30 in the morning to 9.30 a.m. It doesn't say that. So we don't know. Um, he had been treating residents' property. This is He's doing this 
with another pest control operator who had been treating property every week before, Dr. Colo says. So he was very grateful uh, to have his treatment option. I don't know that I suggest a quarterly service, but every two months is very feasible. Okay. The previous tech was going out and spraying weekly, which is usually the norm if you want to get high level control. Here's what we don't know. All right, so this, uh, th this study took place in the summer, last summer, in Gainesville, Florida. Residential neighborhood with a population sample of 20 homes, approximately a quarter acre apiece. All right, so they, they, they took 20 homes at about a quarter acre apiece. So that is two times uh, 0.25. That's approximately five acres that they treated. Okay, let's look, let's look over here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go to a modern neighborhood. This is, this is a neighborhood in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm going to take 20 homes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to take 20 homes and I'm going to do this. Whoops. Right there. Right there. Let's say right there. Uh, what about 20 homes? Okay. All right. So that's about it. That's about five acres right there. 122,000 square feet. That's five acres. And what they did is they sprayed all of these homes. Okay. And then they put these monitoring things and they were going out and testing to see what the control was. The way a scientist defines control and the way the customer defines control is two different measurements. One is how many mosquitoes did we catch in a trap? How many bites does a customer have? That is the way we define it. So let's say you're going to take it and let me do this. I'm going to zoom out here. All right. This is in Gainesville, Florida. All right. Let me not do that yet. I'll come back to this. All right, so we're in Gainesville, Florida. All right, now, uh, traps are not humans. Traps are designed for monitoring mosquito populations in the environment. Mosquitoes have a unique built in in their DNA, their composition. Okay, so what makes what is known as a host seeking. Um, by what med it's mediated by the attraction of physical and chemical cues released in the breath and by the skin. Most of the skin volatiles are, are produced by the host skin microbiota and the difference in microbiota composition correlates the human attractiveness. In other words, if you are a breathing human being who is alive, and you have a skin, you're going to attract mosquitoes. Okay? The, 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 the mosquito uses what is known as a peripheral olfactory system and discriminated by sequence of expressions <laughs> and polymorphisms of olfactory receptors. In other words, they are designed to sniff out human beings and this in the female you know in this whole article which is a very short article right there explains how it's sweat odorants that give off the body scent mosquitoes detect compounds uh, by using olfactory receptors antennal olfactory receptors and neurons in other words they got antennas and these antennas pick up these chemicals that say that's a human and heat from the body that is coming off the body, so and your breath, which gives off CO2. A lot of the traps on the market that are used for mosquito trapping are the best ones combined CO2. If you do not have CO2 traps, you might not, you might not be catching all the mosquitoes really that are in the area.
Okay, so you need the CO2 and you create that with heat and, and a CO2, uh, you know, the, the, the use a, like a propane that creates the CO2 and the heat to mimic a human being. All right. So, so one thing is doing a scientific experiment to prove a reduction of a product. The other thing is the customer experience. We're going to go back over here. Now, what do we have in Florida? Again, this is Wikipedia. Probably not the best uh, for scientific research, but it is accurate when it says Southern Florida and coastal Central Florida are considered neotropical. In other words, the neotropic goes from South Florida, right here, all the way down to right about here. This is all neotropical. All right, here's what we have in Florida that nothing in the U.S. is like, and nothing even in Florida is like, is the fact that the old uh, the old growth definition for tropical and subtropical forest forest in Florida in the United States. Read this with me. I'm going to blow this up a bit so it's easier for you to read. In the United States, subtropical forests are found only in South Florida, covering the southern part of the Floridian coastal plain and the Florida Keys. Okay, so if we have tropical tropical um, forests that we do have, and we have the conditions for tropical forests, then and it only happens in South Florida, and we're we're neotropical. The only state that is neotropical then what you have is a problem that you cannot compare a product and an experience with what you get in california what you get in north florida what you get in central florida with the experience somebody gets in south florida and what i have here in south florida is i got a bunch of transplants from the northeast from everywhere you know jersey and say oh the guy comes out once a month and he sprays you also have overwintering of pests. These mosquitoes go dormant in the winter. Um, we don't. We have temperatures. Uh, I'm going to give you the temperature readings for mosquitoes in Florida. Here is what is known. Um, I forgot the, the name. I think it's a German name of what we have uh, in Florida as far as I'm going to move this a little bit so I can read. Um, and maybe push this off. No, I can't do it. Um, it, it. Here we have what is known as humid subtropical. All of this up here. But when it comes to South Florida, underneath Lake Okeechobee, from like West Palm down here, we have what is known as rainforest conditions all throughout this right here, which is Miami Beach and up to West Palm. And then you have monsoon type um, climate, and then you have a savanna type climate, which is very, very, very humid all throughout this. Not to mention the Everglades are right off over here in the Everglades where we get, when we get those west winds, everything from the over Everglades moves inland. So you have subtropical conditions, we're neotropical climate, we have rainforest conditions along the coastline where people own homes right on the water, right in mangroves, where we have also other types of mosquitoes growing in mangroves. Water quality. All right, so one of the things that, that mosquitoes cannot breed in, they can breed in up to 3908. This is like 103 degrees. 39 degrees Celsius, about 130. At 40 degrees Celsius, mosquito cannot breed. That's 104 degrees. Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus cannot breed in temperatures of 104. Okay, in Florida, we do not have temperatures of 104. It could feel like 104. That is not the same as being 104. Feels like is based on a bunch of factors of what that feeling feels like on the skin. But it is not the same as saying 104. This is why somebody can spray for mosquitoes in the summer in the middle of Phoenix and get 60 days of control 
and why we can't. We're going to move. Here is the annual rainfall, average annual rainfall around the country. What somebody experiences in Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and the southern states, even Hawaii, with almost 60 inches of rain, 50 to 60 inches of rain, we get about 54, okay? Broward just got hit with 20 inches of rain, which is more than what, we, what California gets in an entire year. When you go to the east, where you have the temperatures that are really low, over here, Connecticut, Roll Island, Maine, you know, all this right here, where you got low temperatures and you really don't start getting mosquitoes until later until the temperatures rise because a temperature needs to be, um, it, it needs to be the, 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 the best breeding temperature, in other words, the optimal, that's the word I'm looking for, is somewhere around 82.4 degrees is optimal for 80s Egypti breeding, which is the mosquito that we have, 80s Egypti, and we have 80s Albipictus. When you go to places, Nevada, Arizona, you know, that get South Dakota, California, you know, that get 20-something inches of rain, they virtually get no rain, Yes, you're going to get less mosquito population, number one, if it's really, really hot and there's no rain, there's no mosquito population. You've got high temperatures combined with high humidity, and you have the perfect um, area for breeding mosquitoes, but you have to have both. You have to have the temperature rise to above, I believe, hold on, I'm going to look over here on my notes, um, 67 after 67 degrees, so the optimal breeding temperature is between 71 degrees and, and, and uh, 82 degrees. This is where 90% of mosquito larvae will convert to adult. They, they have the greatest chance of converting to adult. Um, it, it, for for the, the issue with 80s Egypti, I'm sorry, 80s Albopictus, the Asian tiger mosquito, which is what we have, is that they can survive at temperatures at about 50 degrees, 50.72, which is 10.4 degrees Celsius. And their optimal breeding is around 95 degrees. So if it gets too cold, they die and they can't breed. And if it gets really, really, really hot over 104, they can't breed. So there's this temperature window um, available, all right? So now we look at the biggest problem I have with mosquitoes and things that I can't control. 80s mosquito is going to travel, okay, somewhere between, let's say, 50 and 100 meters, which is, let's say, 300 feet. Well, that's the extent of about three properties this way, three properties that way, three properties that way, and three properties this way. If you have a small property with like 6,000 square feet, and you have standing water anywhere in your yard, you're breeding it. If your neighbor has the standing water, they're breeding I got hundreds and hundreds of pictures. I've got 32 videos that I have that I'm going to release on YouTube showing where I find all these problems. Storm drains. And I'm going to show you something in a minute um, about storm drains. You know, little pools that ponds. I mean, I just had a call the other day. My daughter got bit. She's got 11 bites on her body in the house. There's mosquitoes in the house. I go, you got to have, have a big water source somewhere on that property that is having standing water and you're breeding the mosquitoes. And it's usually right in front of your door where you're opening the doors and you're leaving that door open. She says, no, I don't leave the doors open. I said, all right, I go over to the house. I inspect the property. Sure enough, right 10 feet it's approximately 10 feet from the door. There's a fountain that isn't being used. I go inside. I put my flashlight. There's thousands of larvae breeding right there with tons of leaves and organic matter. Here is the pond. Here is the little driveway, which is about 10 feet wide, and there's a front door. We treated it with a larvicide, killed all the larvae. We had to fog the house 
uh, with, with foggers to kill the mosquitoes that are inside the house. They were getting bit every single day. She had like 11 bites on her body to knock it out and then spray the yard for a mosquito just to knock down the population. And after that, she had no more problems. I said, just put a tablet of chlorine in that pond and do it on a weekly basis. Don't allow that pond. If you're not going to run it, either get rid of the pond or treat it, but you're going to have this mosquito problem again if you don't do it. Tires, you know, a toy, a cap of water, gutters full of leaves. You've got mosquitoes breeding up here. Uh, people don't take this so seriously. If people would listen to this, um, where this is great, I can put this down here. Um, you know, leaky hoses, storm drains is our biggest thing because we can't treat them. Bird baths that aren't being cleaned out weekly and removing the larvae. Here's the problem with the larvae and um, the, the, the eggs is that eggs are viable for up to a year on average six months so let's say you got all this breeding going on right you dumped it all the eggs were inside right and it dried all of a sudden now it rains they hatch this is why we get these population increases every time we get these heavy rains because certain areas dry out i mean you got i got video of the turnpike being flooded for weeks mosquitoes are going to breed in there um and then once it dries it rains again they pop um, so there, there is that. Now, let's talk about lambda slyhothrin and pyroproxifen evaluation of lambda slyhothrin. This is a National Library of Medicine. This is stuff I'm not making up, folks. I can't make this stuff up. This is the NIH. The NAT, this is the federal government doing testing because we got to make sure we can control mosquito populations so we don't have diseases. All right. Mosquito control programs in the United States are still searching for the best management practice to control Asian tiger mosquitoes, Aedes albopictus, which is the biggest problem we have, which are the day-biting aggressive mosquitoes. Most intervention methods for this species are either labor-intensive source, uh, source reduction. In other words, you got to get rid of the water. If you don't get rid of the water, you're not going to get control. Okay? Ultra low volume adulticiding. We investigated the effectiveness of barrier spray pesticide applications with urban suburban residential yards in New Jersey. In New Jersey, as control strategy using before after control impact approach application of demand cs okay they're testing the effectiveness of the product 9.7 lambda salahothrin only combined demand uh csr with archer so this is what i'm talking about that this is probably the best combination there's nothing wrong with it resulted in significant similar decrease in adult mosquito abundance Okay, application resulted in significant and similar decrease in adult abundance post-treatment ranging from 78 to 74%. Their study gave a totally different than almost 100 to a 78 to 74. If, you got a, if you've got 100,000 mosquitoes in an area of how far can a mosquito really travel, they did a test and they took and uh, a radioactive like isotope, put it in the mosquito, tracked it, and started looking at all the sites where they found that isotope in, and the and it measured um, something like 54 hectares. What's that, 120-something acres? That's how far a mosquito can travel to lay their eggs. 74%. Both insecticide exceed the 70% reduction threshold considered effective for 80s albopictus control. Why is the 70% so vital? Because what happens when a, when a company registers a pesticide claiming that it kills it, it must kill at least 70% of it. 
Therefore, the, the threshold considered effective, they're considering effectiveness from a scientific perspective only, and usually 70 to 80 percent is enough to reduce mosquito populations so that there is no, uh, or re, I'm sorry, no not, it, so that there's a reduced risk of disease transmission with low mosquito population, low disease transmission. Two to four weeks. Seventy percent, their study showed 78 to 74 percent for two to four weeks. Application of IGR did not did not reduce adult mosquito abundance. Of course, it's an IGR. You have to kill both the adult mosquito and the larvae to reduce the population. So, okay, so now let's look at another study. Give me a second. I got a call coming in, but I got a, I think I, well, hold on a second. This is, okay. Timing of Landosihothrin and pyroproxive in various treatment for Aedes albopictus management. Here's another study. This is a different study, both by the NIH. Okay. This uh, we compared to early June berry application loss and demand CS mixed with insect growth regulator Archer in late July in urban suburban residential partials. So this is like large areas. These applications resulted in 43 to 50 percent reduction in adult albopictus population in early and late intervention study partials, respectively compared with untreated controls. So now you have a, one study gives you a 70% and this other study gives you a 43 to 51%. But direct missed applications of archer demacularia set that led to elevated level of mortality over a six week period, but you still only controlled 50%. This is not in line with a brand promise that says, hey, if we spray your yard, you're gonna be able to enjoy it again. The science doesn't match the marketing. Here is a study, the environmental fate. Now we do environmental fate studies. And the reason I do environmental and I read it, I don't do environmental fates. I read the environmental because I need to know how this product behaves in the environment. What this tells me is that Pyroprox is reported to have 95 percent inhibition of emergence of larvae lasted up to okay two months pyrofroxin insecticide used to control red important and they go into that here is what i am looking at so this says wait a minute but reported 95 inhibition of larvae doesn't control adult remember we already discussed it does not control larvae I mean, adults, it only controls the larvae. Here is what the FATE study shows. Photo half-life of the soil, in soil, okay, is six days to eight, the half-life. In other words, if I put out a 1.3% and I'm reducing that in water uh, by 128 ounces, I've got a, a 0.0% one something percent or 0.089 percent something like that half of that is gone in six to eight days in water it's 3.75 to six days on the half-life so what happens is 50 percent of that product is gone within three to six days and then in another three to six days half of that product is gone so we got a 70 percent loss of the product in about 12 days You go to another half-life, now we get into the 90 percentile. All right. So there's the science behind pyroproxvin. So reality is you're going to get about two weeks of actual larval kill. If you have a yard and you're spraying it in your yard and it's exposed to sunlight and water. So now we get into ProFlex. We look at the label. Again, 
We use this product extensively. There's nothing wrong with this product. Here is where um, we, we got to look at what the label says. And what the label recommends is barrier applications. Let me, let me, let me look something up for you so I can save you. Okay. Okay. So long, effective long-term control of fleas, roaches, mosquitoes, gnat. Okay. What it, what constitute long-term? Is long-term hours, days, weeks, months? We have to look. The label tells you because that's misleading to read it. If you read, listen, if you read into something, and here's where the population that I talk to, the people that I talk to don't get it, is that if you read into something, what you want to read into, you will find it, and then you will be sadly disappointed. This is called an eisegesis. You got to do an exegesis of this text to understand it. For mosquito and gnats, it's one ounce per gallon of water, and then one um, 150 square feet, you know, and it tells you how much to apply. Repeat application only if there are signs of renewed activity. Do not exceed one application every 21 days. All right, so now you got that 21 days. Now you're starting to see, you start seeing two weeks, 21 days. Let me go back over here. Uh, mosquito rate, 21 days, 21 days, uh, foundation. All right. Apply as a spray where mosquitoes must rest. Hmm, where they rest. Well, where are they resting? On trees and shrubs. Maybe on an overhang in a dark corner. The bottom ideal target is the bottom of trees, 20 feet. Mosquitoes aren't generally going to fly higher than 20 feet. Do not apply more than 14 days. So you're given a 14-day application. But wait, if the product will last up to two months, why are you allowed 14 days and it says not not before 14 days but after 14 days you're allowed to apply it let's go over here mosquito control rate and let's look at rain we can't apply it in drains let's look at rain applying here's where here's where you got a problem in south florida that you don't have in california and I don't know if you can apply this product in California. I think you can. Applying this product in calm weather when rain is not predicted for the next 24 hours. Okay. I want you to think with me for a minute. You run a pest control business. You have hundreds of clients who are all complaining about mosquitoes. And you tell the client, I'm sorry, Mr. Client, but I got rain predicted in the next five days. Every single day, look at your weather calendar. I can't make a mosquito application legally for you with this product or any pyrethroid product because the label says I can't. The label is the law. This is the federal law. The state of Florida says I can't because the state of Florida says this is a law. I can't spray for your mosquitoes until I know it's not going to rain. Now you have 100 clients waiting and you and the moment the moment it stops raining, the phone starts ringing, and every client is calling. When are you going to come out? Because there's no rain this week. You can come and spray my mosquitoes. Says yeah, but I'm backed up, 100 clients before I can get to you. That's what we're up against. Let's go. This is a rainfall. Okay, applications to underside of leaf door soffit window, permanently protected from rainfall by covering overhand awnings or structure. You can make it, this is ideal where you wanna make it if, but this is not related to mosquito, all right? So let's talk over here. Do not make applications during rain. So if it's raining and it rained that day and it's predicted, there's no mosquito service gonna happen that day legally. Wait, because this gets better. Okay, 
Now, here, here is for perimeter around windows and floors. Okay, so let's say you're doing for regular pest control. Apply made 14 days after previous treatment if heavy rainfall occurs. So a customer says, I'll get into another rant about this. Customer says, hey, I want you to come out on a quarterly basis in the summer. Really? There is no product available for you to cover you on most pyrethroids or most products on the market for 14 days. So this illusion that you're going to get control in South Florida for three months, you can't guarantee a product past 14 days in the summer. Let's go over here. Okay. Outdoor low pressure spray treatments. Uh, a band around windows door retreat, 14 days if every rainfall. For exterior animal lawns, trees, ornamental plants are known to pest uh, where animals are known to rest. By the way, insects are animals. They're in the animal kingdom. Application to soil surface with an IG, uh, with IGR activities uh, provides 21 days of IGR activity. If needed, repeat treatment be made at 14 days after the last treatment if heavy rainfall. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. One of my texts is trying to get a hold of me. My bad. Um, I will let, I will talk to him in a minute. So let's say we do, to save everybody, the rainfall is five mentions of rainfall, 21, 14 days, unoccupied areas of livestock facilities. And again, 14 days. All right, so we got a label that says, if there's heavy rain, you have to make another application after 14 days. In other words, to get mosquito control in South Florida, I have to be on your property every 14 days, except when we're flooded with rain for 14 days in the summer to get mosquito control. Rapid degradation of Lambda Cyhothrin makes treated vegetables relatively safe for consumption the product breaks down relatively quickly. 14 days post-treatment, there was no residual on the product. There's no residual on your leaves either because fruits and vegetables are outside in a, in a landscape. Just like your plants. It gets better, folks. So here is the degradation of Lambla. This is NPIC, National Pesticide Information Center. And we're going to go down here and we're going to look at half-lives. Remember I told you about half-lives? Okay. Alkaline water degraded Lambla Sahadra, approximately half-life of seven days. Well, what do we have in South Florida coming out of our pipes? Alkaline water. If you got irrigation, You've got overhead irrigation on all those shrubs where every landscape I go to has a spigot and there's this thing going across it because that's the way they do it in nurseries. Every landscaper thinks that that's how it should be. So there's overhead irrigation. So I just sprayed all your shrubs and you have your irrigation on every single day because you need to. And the water coming out of that line is 8.5 on the pH on average between 7.5 and 8. So seven days, even if it doesn't rain in South Florida, because everybody has irrigation that is inadequate for a landscape, it's a it, it's the same irrigation system set up for nurseries because they have containers. Your trees and shrubs do not need water on the leaf. They need water in the soil. When I go to do most horticultural consultations in the landscape, correcting that landscape and fixing all the heads and doing everything right because the customer doesn't want pests, the customer doesn't want to use chemical. It's an average of about $1,000 in repairs to correct the system. Half-life, okay, so the first half-life is 50%, the second half-life is 75, the third half-life is 88, and subsequently until you get to the fifth half-life, okay, lambda cyhundrin, on plant surfaces is five days, the half-life. So by 15 days, 
it has degraded 88% in two weeks. You have less than 88% of the product. Now throw into that light and rain in the summer. Representative soil, see in the soil it's 30 days. Let me pop this up for you. In the soil here, it's 30 days. But mosquitoes don't breed in the soil. We're not treating the soil. We're treating foliage. Let's go into, so, you know, pyrethroid sprays. Again, when we go and look at this, let me bring myself down here because I think I'm outside. A 2004 study, 12 weeks from May 10 to August of 2004, you've got a 67 to 82% for the first four weeks. You don't get 100%. You get 60, 67 to 82%. Mortality was recorded within 24 hours. So what does that mean? Most of these products work to get you a quick knockdown. And then the knockdown is quick. But then as the days go by, your first seven weeks, that thing starts to go and starts to decline rapidly. Permethrin was the worst, 69%. And then you get um, permethrin and PBO which, you know, permethrin is the first, by the way, permethrin was the first synthetic pyrethroid created. It's a 50, I think, plus year old product now or more, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it could be in the 70 year old product. Um, retreatment, uh, first four weeks, the study then compared uh, two insecticide tests in order. So pyrethroid sprays, pick your poison. It doesn't matter. They use Suspend. Suspend is an amazing product. We've used it. It's delta methrin. And so compared, you know, you're not going to get 100% control. Efficacy of two pyrethroid insects applied to barrier treatments managing mosquitoes. Here's another study. I'm not going to bore you reading the whole thing. But populations were monitored weekly for two weeks before treatment and eight weeks post-treatment. 24 residential properties um using five methods co2 baited here we go co2 baited traps light traps to catch and monitor mosquitoes 89 to 85 percent fewer mosquitoes with bifenthrin in other words another anything that ends for your information anything that ends in thrin is a pyrethroid generally lambda sahothrin and bifenthrin 89% um, fewer mosquitoes than untreated control. Um, so then again, with this is Kulex Pippins, um, I believe the yeah, 80s, 80s Albopictus is what they did. All right, another study. Uh, let me see here. In field cages, 90% knockdown mortality with beta slifruthrin, another pyrethroid. 75 to 83 percent for the first five weeks and we already discussed archer we're going to discuss the label here's right here up front uh, let's see here see here's what you got to know it is a violation it is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with this label. In other words, if it says I can only apply it every two weeks, I can only apply it every two weeks, I got to apply it um, here. Let's look at the photo stability. Uh, which one is this one? Which one am I using? Archer. Oh, the Archer Insect Growth Regulator. And let's see if I can find it. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, here we go. Right here. Let me blow this up for you. Archer insect growth regulator is stable in sunlight for up to 14 days, delivering effective residual control of outdoor pests such as fleas, cockroaches in area, even in direct sunlight. But hey, yes, but only for 14 days. In other words, 
it, it can it can take an egg and damage it, take a roach and damage it, take a larvae and damage it. But if you're applying it outside in sunlight, when you use a director, Archer and Sick Roller retains against pre-adult fleas for up to seven months, pre-adult cockroaches for up to nine months. In other words, this is indoor. But if you're applying it outside, it's 14 days. Demand CS, same thing. The label is, you know, when we look at rainfall, rainfall, same thing because it's got the same restrictions. Um, now, it says for army worm, cumber, and fleas, you can add a surfactant. Um, delay watering or mowing for 24, uh, 12 to 24 hours for optimum control of surface feeding insect pests. So again, you know, you're not going to get um, the control. It's the same product. And here is Navarolon, um, which is Navarolon 10, which actually is not legal to be applied in the form it comes in um, more than twice a year in a, to, to a landscape um, in a 10% concentration. In a 1% concentration, you can make a 21-day application. But in a 10 day, you're limited to two times a year. They use 20 parts per million, I believe. Um, let me see how many, yeah, 20 parts per million. So here's the results. This is Novarolon, which is the chitin synthesis inhibitor, okay? And this is what prevents them from making an exoskeleton. 100% mortality of Aedes aegypti larvae within 24 hours was observed at 20 parts per million. Nervarolon, 100 grams um, in 250 milliliters of water, which is the minimum dose. So they use the minimum dose. Now, the total elimination of eight larvae continued for two weeks and 50% reduction observed until eight weeks. So you, can you live with a 50% reduction in mosquito control? That's my question. The answer is no. Here is what I have the conversation with the client. Hey, listen, I, I, you know, mosquitoes are eating me alive. All right. So I ask them, how are you using your yard? And like, what do you mean? Um, yeah. What time uh, are you going outside? you know, to, to endure your yard, your yard. Well, in the evenings after work, why? Because most people work. Most people, even if they work from home, they don't sit outside in the middle of the day. I go outside. I live here and I work from home and I go outside and I enjoy a lunch on the terrace. I enjoy, I use my terrace. I enjoy my breakfast out there. I enjoy dinners out there. We sit out there on, on Friday nights and listen to music and have a drink and smoke a cigar. I use my patio extensively. I am a pest control operator. And I got to tell you, we cannot control mosquitoes 100%. I've got biological stations. I've got a misting system that is automated to turn on. And I turn it on 15 minutes before I'm going to go outside. We have biological traps. I have baiting that I use to bait the plants around my property. We're using repellent and we still get bit because we live in rural South Florida in Homestead. When do mosquitoes bite the most? They start biting at 6.30 at night. Peak feeding is about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and at night, it's about the same time, 1630, it starts to climb, it peaks. So about 930, mosquitoes population die down. So if you go, if you have a mosquito misting program that is coming out every month, when the population goes like this and you go out at that time of night and you're a breathing human beings with, with flesh, it's guaranteed you're going to get bit. My girlfriend gets bit at least once a weekend. We have to use repellent. Even when we go outside, we knock down the population to 90 something percent and that one mosquito will still find her. 
and she's miserable. She gets upset. She says, aren't you a bug guy? Can't you control it? I can't perform miracles. And I have all the tools at my disposal. And in a townhouse environment, that is so difficult. So now we're here. Let me drop myself. I don't know why it does this, but it does. Okay, so, you know, at what temperature does, you know, the, the, the effects of temperature and shading. What they found is that shading, when you have high temperatures to control mosquitoes, this was a test to see, you know, how hot does it need to get? And if it's shading and if there's light, the reality is that what the study reveals is that at 100, at 40 degrees Celsius, which is, which is 104 degrees, it doesn't matter if it's in the shade or if it's in full sun, 104 degrees is 104 degrees, it will not hatch. Again, we don't have those temperatures, so it doesn't really matter, but the study is there. Let me get you another study over here. And then we're going to get into some control techniques and some products because we've been going on. I said this would be about an hour, um, and it is about an hour. Uh, it's just a you know a Cuban hour for me because um, I'm Cuban. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to try to move it along as I can get this. Um, the effective treatment of immature developing uh, albopictus, Hades albopictus. Um, it, this just shows again first instar mosquitoes uh, was able to survive at higher temperature, which is 40 degrees. Mosquito complete development and third instar indicating the ability to survive even in high temperature. So they can't adapt is what, you know, one study shows they don't. One study shows, yep, they certainly did. In this study, they did. Um, so yes, there you go. So now you have another study that contradicts the first study that shows, yep, they can survive and they can make it to a third instar. And um, environmental temperatures, and I'll let you, I mean, I'm giving you links, I'll have links to all this in the video, for those of you who are real geeks, um, but here's what I want you to see and take out from this study, is host feeding. There, here's the life cycle. This is about a week, on average, from, from mosquito laying eggs, so the eggs hatching, becoming larvae, becoming a pupae, and then, becoming an adult mosquito is seven days. In that time, a mosquito can lay between 200 and 600 eggs, okay? This is why IGR is so important in controlling mosquito population. If you're only using a pyrethroid, you're not, and you have places of water that you didn't spray, you're gonna get the breeding. This is known as the, the, the whoops, let me see here. The gonotrophic cycle, where basically it finds a human, has a blood meal. Then we go into the pathogenic cycle. And this is where the, the you know, disease transmission is possible. This is based upon spatial distribution. How far is one house from the other? Um, and I'm going to show you something now. Population dynamics. You know, how dense is this population? So we got, um, you know, let's go over here where I went. Uh, where's my Google Earth? All right. So let's, this is in Jacksonville, Florida. And I've got, um, let's see here. I'm going to blur this for a minute. All right. So got it. So I, it, well, I can't blur it out. All right. So let's, I'm going to pick a random property because I don't want to put a customer's property on here. This is just random stuff I pick up. Um, so let's go to uh, go from Gainesville, Florida. I'm going to make up an address somewhere in Coral Gables. Let me see if I get lucky. 445 um, Galliano Avenue in Coral Gables, Florida. I don't know anybody there. I just know Galliano Avenue and I know addresses in Coral Gable. So it will find it. We went from Gainesville to Coral Gables, Florida. Okay, there's Galliano. It's in the middle of nowhere. All right. And what I want to do is let me put this heading north. I want to show you something pretty interesting. All right. And then so I get calls from customers that are, I'm going to zoom out, that are in the middle of nowhere. 
All right. And let's say I get a call from customers over here. This is where most of my customers call with mosquito problems. Um, this is Vizcaya right here. This is the entrance to, um, to Key Biscayne. Um, and we get calls from here. Okay. So we get a ton of calls from this area. So somebody gives me a call from here and I'm going to just zoom in right into this area. I'm going to drop, I'm going to see if I can, there we go. I'm going to drop it in here. All right, and this is right near the water. And I'm gonna 2D this so I can see. All right, and then this is this is where people call me and said, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes. Okay, I want you to look at this. This is one house and these are coverings. And this house says I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes, yet every single one of these trees are 20 to 30 feet high. They have holes in them. There's water breeding. And I'm looking at this property right now. And, you know, how do I get control of mosquitoes when you are densely populated? The reality is it's going to take an integrated approach. It can be done to reduce the population. But remember, you can't be outside between 6.30 at night to 9.30 at night between 6.30 in the morning to 9.30 in the morning because those are our peak. You can't sit out there, okay, with a mosquito misting service at 8 o'clock at night or 7.30 and then say, I don't want to get bit. You're going to get bit. There's no options. I don't know if there's ponds in here. I don't know how much standing water there is. We know nothing. All I can tell you is when a customer calls me and they give me their address, the first thing I do is I pop it into Google Maps and I look at what's around and what can I see and what am I up against. Here is something right there that I don't know if that's a pond. I don't know what that is, but that's less than a hundred feet from that property. Here we go. Look, what is that? I don't know. That's a, uh, that looks like a shrub and it's that. So I look, I look around what I'm looking for. Let me look up something. And so let me show you the difference between this and Pinecrest, Florida. This is only probably eight miles from uh, maybe eight to 10 miles from this location in Pinecrest, Florida. So we're going to go out. It's going to go boom, go south, about 13. That's about 14 miles. All right. Pinecrest, Florida. All right. These are mostly acre homes. And look how big these homes are. What I can do for a client here in Pinecrest, Florida is totally different than what I can do for somebody in Coral Gables. Look how open that property is. That's probably an acre. If I take this and I measure it, okay, and I measure this property, I don't know whose it is. I'm just random property, okay? All right, that's 41,000 square feet. That's an acre. What I can do on an acre where the customer is here, there's virtually no shrubs. And I spray all of these shrubs or I treat them with bait. I install biological stations to trap the mosquitoes. And we put a repellency system installed in the back around this pool, which, is, you know, we're going to show you now. I will virtually get that client mosquito control. Now, it's going to cost him several hundred dollars a month to get the control that he wants. But if he, you know, owns a million dollar property and he wants to enjoy this at eight o'clock at night, because he's got a $4,000 grill right there and he wants to go outside and smoke a $200 cigar, you know, he can afford it. And, and the reality is I got to be transparent with people is mosquito control is for people who can afford it, who have, um, you know, money left over that they don't really need or care for. And they can spend it for the comfort they want. I mean, I cannot apologize for that. You know, a poor person in a small house in a suburb might not be able to afford that kind of mosquito luxury. But look at this house. I mean, this is all acre property. I can get this client control better than I can that client, even though there's a canal and mosquitoes are going to be breeding in that canal. 
this is going to be a problem, but he's going to need, if he wants that proximity to that canal, if, if that is stagnant and it isn't moving and mosquitoes are breeding, which certain mosquitoes can breed on the edge of the water, then this is going to be much harder um, to control, but it's doable. So what we get into is, let me get into, this is what I'm talking about, about the products. Now, now we're going to get into it. I'm going to go over about another 15 minutes, but I think it's well worth it for you to understand um, what options are available. This is what we use. We use the, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see, this is called the Insecto Trap. This was developed by Philip Kohler, that same entomologist that I talked about at the beginning. I interviewed on my Pest Geek podcast, one of the researchers that was working on that be two years before it was even brought out to the market. I have the podcast. Um, I forget now, Lacey, and I'm going to get you her name, but I think I have that study somewhere. Um, we use this. this. You need about one of these every 2,000 square feet of shrubbery, you put it, you don't put it in 1,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet. You have to put these traps where there's no air movement um, and there is um, shade. So ideally, you know, in a corner somewhere behind the shrubs where nobody's going to touch it, where the little kids aren't going to touch it, where the dog isn't going to eat it and chew it up. It, you know, again, these are all the limitations that we have that we have to evaluate and say, yeah, this would work for this client. No, this will not work for the client. And then give the client a realistic expectation of what they're going to expect. This You can get this at Do My Own. Um, I highly recommend this product. Here's another product I highly recommend that we are going to use and we use and we recommend to our clients to use. These are the Thermacell um it has a little butane refill with the chemical. What it does is you turn it on, it heats up. Basically, it's like a modern citronella candle that puts out a product that repels mosquitoes. It really works. They have an installation system um, that you can do for the entire home. Here's one. Like, you can install it right here. You can install it. You can see it right there. Um, they're not cheap. Um, a, a house system with three units runs, I think, um, 500 bucks. Uh, let me take a look right now. I'll tell you right now. Uh, the live system. Okay. Again, this is a luxury item. You want to enjoy your backyard whenever you want to enjoy it. It's going to come. Uh... Okay. I'll take care of that. Um, so you go, it's, and then what you do is you fire this thing up when you're going to be outside and it starts to kill the mosquito uh, population. I mean, it starts to repel them from you because what the mosquito is attracted to you, you need something to repel them away from you. You're either going to put on a repellent spray, but what I get with people is I don't want to put on repellent. I don't want to use those chemicals on my body. I said, this is the only other option you have in addition to a mosquito reduction program. Uh, but for repellers, you can see it's, 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 1200 we're going to start selling these units and installing them for our clients we've always recommended the little tabletop but people want something that they can use anytime and they can put it and turn it on when they and then turn it off and i think these things will last up to i forgot how long 12 hours of use so the little things uh, inside last longer and and they also have a lower uh, cost model um i think over here if you go over here They've got a lower cost model uh, for the home. See this one right here, 12 hours. You can stand these little things. Here's a little disc. And these are $41 a piece. The refills, I think, are about 10, 12 bucks for the refill with 12 hours of repellency. So if you're not out every single night, this is a better option for you um, to do. And then um, the Into Cares trap. We use the Intucare trap. It's an amazing product. The only problem with Intucare is you cannot get it yourself. This is only for licensed applicators. Um, we have to install it. Um, we have to maintain it. We can't sell you the product on this. Um, and this works marvelously for reducing mosquito population. Again, it comes with a price because now you have to integrate 
a misting system, a misting service with a trap that you have to maintain to reduce the population even more in combination with a repelling system, okay? And the other one that works really well, I'll tell you the pros and cons on this, is going to be the mosquito magnet. Um, the mosquito magnet, you know, you know, shop by area. Most people that I that can afford this, you know, have an acre home. It's a thousand dollar system. It has an attractant and it has a canister. It will work. You put it away from you, like 50 feet away from you. It pretends it's a person. It's attracting the mosquitoes to bring the mosquitoes that are in there. So if you are still, I, I have customers that own it. They say it doesn't work. What they're expecting again is I installed one product and then I'm expecting that product to control everything. And I said, no, it would work great if you put it outside and you run it for an hour, you know, before you decide to go outside, you run it. It's in addition to the mosquito reduction spray service, in addition to the stations, because these are acre properties that get very expensive to do. Um, this is one I recommend. And then lastly, one of the things that you look at is a misting system. I've installed these. I've installed $4,000 systems. I've installed $10,000 systems. It depends on the property. This is, in my opinion, the best system on the market. It is the the, the Bentley uh, uh, on the market of misting system. It's, it's, it, this one is a tankless system. Um, and you're going to get control when you want. In other words, you can't afford to pay somebody every day. You can install a system. You put it on 15, 20 minutes before you're going to go outside. It'll knock it out. I have a misting system in my house installed. It's the best investment you're going to make if you're enjoying it every day. If you got worries that you don't want a non-toxic product, this product is what I installed in a lot of people's home that have, let's say they have koi ponds. Um, you can't use the synthetic products if you have koi ponds, if you're in near living waterfront property. I do a ton of waterfront property. They got boat docks. You can't use the synthetic product. This is the only thing you can use because this is soap, sodium lauryl sulfate, soybean oil, and corn oil. Here's the drawback. One case is going to cost $371. This is what you're going to spend a month on a system because you got to run it six, seven, eight, nine times a day collapse the mosquito population constantly with one of these misting systems. Um, so there is all of your options. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much all of your options um, on there. Of course, you have um, the natural stuff, which is like the Ecovia line. I'll show you that in a second. Um, Ecovia MT. You can put Ecovia MT in a misting system. It's mosquito and tick. Uh, it is a natural botanical product, but again, um, if you're sensitive to smells or essential oils, you can't use it. And then you have also your piranha, which is uh, piranha, which is your pyrethrin, pyrethroid um, system, I believe. It's uh, is it? No, it's not this one. Um, it's called. Um, uh, hold on, uh, mosquito. Uh, misting, uh, misting. They they got a piranha system. Piranha makes the product, um, which is a a basically permethrin and PBO. Um, but again, it's used in horse stables. You can have a system like this. The system alone is, you know, two thousand dollars plus the installation. Um, but these are all your options, folks. These are the facts of what it takes to do real mosquito control in South Florida where people jump from company to company being disappointed. I'm trying to save you the aggravation of going through that experience. We go out, we do a complete evaluation. We are honest with you. We tell you, look, this is what you're realistically going to expect. It's, it's what I tell people is it is experiential. you got to give something 90 days because I got to be able to switch it up and switch the protocols and switch what we do or sell you a complete system and say, look, this is going to be, you know, between the, the misting, the, 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 um, the, the, um, monitor the baits buckets and uh, a repellent system, you know, you're looking at an investment of about a thousand dollars 
initially, and then it's going to cost you $200 a month, let's say. That's realistically what it takes to do what the customer expects. So I just hope that this helps you. Uh, if you're needing to get a hold of us, our number is 786. You know, our website is naturepest.com. Go ahead and give us a call. We'd be glad to help you. Hey, this is Frank the Pest Geek wishing you a pestacular day.